what's going on guys this is empty box and today I want to talk about why I'm not racing in VR as well as a little bit on the single screen to open screen VR discussion that inevitably occurs in the sim racing world in the background some automobile to 2 with the late 90s GT1 cars at Bathurst because because you can and because you should if you have the opportunity because GT1 cars plus Bathurst yeah, it's pretty fun. I just want to start up front here by saying that I enjoy VR more than racing on a single screen. I enjoy VR more than the, the experiences I've had with triple screens. I, I do feel like VR is something a step beyond. However, what I found over the last several years is that it became increasingly more difficult to actually play the game in VR. And by that I mean I enjoyed the game more but I found more reasons to not be playing the game. And while some of that is down to where I was at with sim racing at the time, it really isn't now that I look back at it and here I sit today, you know, interested in sim racing and having a blast. It comes down to a multitude of factors, and if any one of these factors weren't an issue in my case, then I would probably race in VR continuously and I wouldn't look back because there's no reason to look back. However, in my case, it just doesn't work out as well for me. So first issue is I wear glasses. I have prescription lens inserts for my Rift and everything works perfectly fine. However, you still got to go through the dance of taking my glasses off, <laughs> putting the VR headset on, and then every now and then when you got to jump back out or you want to check what's going on around you in the world for one reason or another, got to put the glasses back on. It's just, it's really, really clunky. It's not a deal breaker, but again, it is just a minor annoyance. Then there's also the issue of being just disconnected from the world around you. Uh, this wasn't so much of an issue previously for me. However, I got a dog and you know, you want to keep an eye on the dog and make sure the dog's doing you know, the things the dog should be doing, not the things the dog shouldn't be doing. And you know, yeah, you want to kind of be aware of what's going on around you. I'm sure many of you guys out there with small children will be like, yeah, that that's 100% a deal breaker because it is an issue. Uh, and I actually legitimately, I kid you not, I bring up these first two for a reason. I had an incident where my dog jumped up onto my desk, and she was a little puppy at the time, she didn't know better, and grabbed my glasses and started chewing them while I'm playing some racing sims. And I also don't want to have to put the dog into a cage because I want to play a video game because that just doesn't feel right to me. So yeah, that, that's an issue. Then there's the comfort issue. The, the Oculus Rift is not the most uncomfortable device I've ever had strapped to my face. Well, actually it probably is just by process of elimination, but you guys understand what I'm saying. It's not the worst thing, but you know, in a longer race, especially a race of higher levels of intensity, yeah, you're going to be sweating anyways, and then you're in the headset, and you're sweating more, and you're sweating more, and by the time you get done with the race, you end up with with VR goggle face, and it's unpleasant to say the least. Again, deal breaker? No, but just another factor that I don't care to deal with. Then, of course, you come to the question of support in the various racing sims out there. And in particular, I point the flag at two sims out there. And, you know, you got Dirt Rally 2.0 that had no VR support on launch and then eventually got added in. And I was strictly no VR, no buy. And I bought it when it did eventually end up with VR support. But then you also have uh, ACC, which is a game that in VR is, is god-awful terrible. And I would not play it. And I did not play it because the VR support and the way everything worked and the image quality, it was so terrible, regardless of what settings I could possibly run, even in a test setting, test session setting, with all the settings turned up, it was so terrible, I could not play the game with any sort of enjoyment because it was that bad. Along the same lines, there's also performance, which, you know, I'm rocking a system that is three or four years-ish old, m maybe even actually older than that. It's a i7 6700K with a GTX 1070, uh, which is 
back when all that was new stuff and you know it wasn't certainly a low end build by any means but even back then it wasn't the highest end and certainly now years on later down the road it's certainly not done itself any favors in, in the raw performance aspect but uh, you know it just kind of feeds back into my nature of being someone who tweaks things settings and all that stuff incessantly even when honestly I probably should just learn to leave well enough alone but that is an issue deal breaker no but again another issue and lastly of my small little issues that aren't really major issues aren't deal breakers but are issues the fact I make videos and VR videos place tremendous amounts of demand on the system already because you're recording and doing all that and so that makes the performance aspect even more problematic but you got that going on as well as the fact that you know I'm commentating these races while I'm driving and you know the headset rests on your cheek so it kind of moves around a little bit so it adds more motion in the video as you look around you know it, it very quickly can turn into looking like you're driving in a freaking 9.3 earthquake you know, pretty crazy stuff with all the stuff going on and while I was doing this the whole time I was having to remain conscious of that factor and make a actual effort to keep my head still and not move around in the way that I wanted to look around but in a way that I could look around and again it's just a headache it was also a headache for the viewers but I don't know, VR videos are one of those things where a lot of people love them, a lot of people hate them. It's 50-50, do whatever you feel like, but here we are. Those really are the reasons why I'm not racing in VR, and why I really have very little urge to race in VR, even though I actually enjoy racing in VR more. It's one of these things where there's enough hoops I feel like I have to jump through that when I think about it, I just decide I would rather do something else with my time. You know, the barrier to entry is a little bit higher, and my interest level doesn't meet that barrier to entry, but hooked up to a single screen as I am now, I can meet the barrier of entry, and I fire up the game, have some fun. It, it's strange like that. I want to go ahead and touch on the single screen, triple screen VR discussion uh, within the sim racing world that unfortunately has kind of cooled off a bit, but... Uh, I think it's still a relevant discussion to continue to have as display technology moves on and progresses. Because as I recently found out with my rig refresh back tail end of 2020, uh, or right when Flight Simulator 2020 released, that apparently now you can find TVs that are perfectly acceptable to play with uh, for sim racing purposes. <laughs> That was not something I expected to discover because I associate TVs with horrendous input lag and especially with sim racing, input lag being something that is absolutely atrocious and is the worst thing to deal with to the point where I'd say, hey, PSA, turn turn V-Sync off if you have V-Sync turned on. You, you'll do yourself a load of favor. Just deal with the screen tearing. Just trust me on that one. But, uh, you know, now dealing with a... $200 43-inch TV that has proven itself to me to be perfectly acceptable. It's not great. It's, like, don't get me wrong. It's not the most beautiful television you're ever going to find. You know, yeah, there's much better quality out there. But at $200, that's a price point of 600 bucks for three of them. That's actually basically in line with what you're going to pay for a VR headset. Because the question didn't used to be VR versus triple screen. The question was actually VR and a couple hundred bucks in your pocket versus a triple screen. Because it used to be you were going to have to spend more money for a triple screen just for the displays. Whereas now I feel like maybe the display technology has advanced to the point where the price gap actually closes. And in my case, I look at it as I've had VR for several years now and I enjoy it so much that I'm like, okay, when I make that next jump, when I update my system, you know, and when I move to my next headset, if I choose to, I'm going to want to go VR because it is that great. There is the presence factor. There is the being in the game world. There is the immersion. There is the 
moments where you suddenly understand certain aspects of the way a car is designed that just make absolutely no sense on a 2D screen. You know, there's the ability to just look around easily and, and all that. And, you know, yeah, it's, it's great. VR <laughs> is great, don't get me wrong. But at the same time, I look at the issues that I've discussed in the first half of this video and see that none of those are really being addressed particularly efficiently. You know, that's kind of partly inherent with the VR experience. Yeah, sure, there might be, you know, VR headsets that are more comfortable or maybe squeeze my glasses in there at the same time so I don't have to do the dance like, like some people are able to get away with, but... You know, it is one of those things where there's issues, and triple screen doesn't necessarily have those issues, but it doesn't have the immersion factor and the just the awesomeness that VR does. So, I honestly don't know. Beforehand, before this experience with this TV, it was 100% in favor of next time I'm, I'm going VR, I'm going to get a newer headset when I update my system basically set in stone because I do enjoy it that much but now I look at it and I'm like yeah yeah I, I really don't know it's because the hoops and that's why I'm not racing in VR and that's why I will remain on single screen for life in all likelihood <laughs> because I just won't make a decision and I'll just stay where I am right now which is perfectly fine by me anyways hope you guys enjoyed bye bye